Hey up YouTube, so in this video today, I wanna to just have a chat with you about start and treat your business like a business from the very get go. Now, this advice was given to me when I first started and there's been a few bits of advice that people have told me that really stuck in my mind and this is one of them. Now, first of all, you need to understand if you're starting out and I think if you've been doing this a while it's a relevant video really because you're already doing it but if you're just starting out first off you need to understand the position that you'll be in as a self-employed gardener now I'm going to be a bit brutal but I'm not because at the end of the day everybody knew this is the reality so you aren't just going to be able to go out and do the gardening that you enjoy come back home and that's it you are going to be the gardener the worker the dog's body the managing director the finance manager the maintenance man you know and you can offload all of them jobs so if you don't want to do maintenance you can pay a dealership to maintain all your gear and you know as soon as it goes wrong or anything needs doing to it you take your turn and you can pay for that privilege if you don't want to be a bookkeeper or an accountant, you've got no interest, you, you know, you don't, just don't want to do it. You can save all your receipts yourself, stuff them into a big box and give them to your accountant at the end of the year and he will do it all for you, but he'll charge you. Uh, and it's the same with other things, you can offload it, but you'll be paying for this privilege. And that's the thing, there's no free help, so to speak for self-employed it's very much all on you if you want to offload it you can but like i said it comes at a premium it comes at a cost but i'm not trying to put you off it this is just a reality of it self-employed life can be extremely rewarding extremely hard at times but i have been running my business now for four it's the fourth season there's been hard times there's been good times but there is a thousand times more good times than there's bad times and but just remember you can be having good times brilliant you know everything can be going fine and then you know weeks months months of this whatever and then it can all come crashing down in a day you know in, in one interaction because as i said you aren't just going out to garden you aren't the managing director you're also a people manager a cat herder you are managing customers and customers expectations and there is people out there and i do believe this hand on heart there is some people out there that they have got nothing on in their lives other to other than to make it hard for everybody around them and you'll do a quote and you'll either hopefully it will end at the quote where you'll just have some miserable horrible person or you might do a job and you think it's going fine but all the way through the, you know you've got some boiler who's picking 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 moaning chipping away at you trying to get it and that will just come cause you to come crashing down but that's a reality it happens it doesn't happen very often but it happens so as i said i'm not trying to put people off being self-employed i think it's one of the most for me anyway it's been one of the most rewarding not only financially but i'm not saying you can you know and some people public think that you know we're billionaires you know we've got cruise ships booked and we own yachts we aren't you know we're probably only slightly better off than people who've got a comparatively good job shall i say but i like the i like the fact i'm happy with the financial return i'm also happy with the fact i like making my own future there's no harm in working for somebody none at all really but if you like myself, I like working for myself. I like, even if, you know, I've been off now for a couple of months, the, the reserves are getting low, shall I say. There is further reserve, I don't want to touch them. So, you know, we will be running it quite close, but I know it's up to me to go out, earn the money, top all that back up, and we will do it, you know. It's just, it's just one of those. And I like that, I like that pressure, if I'm being honest with you. Uh, my brother, We've both been brought up exactly the same, but he's got a completely different outlook. For him, he likes the steady nature of a job. He likes the fact that it's the boss's worry to get, you know, work in. He likes the fact 
that it's you know the employer's problem to pay him not him i like it the other way it's my problem but as i said so i'm not trying to put you off but i do like to give you the realities of it, especially if you are starting out so treat your business like a business from day one what does that mean well there's two types you could be in a position where you're working full-time and you are basically building up a bit of a round uh, you know in, in your spare time now tax wise whatever does that make you fall under a job and knocker the, the worst type of gardener we're not going to debate that but you are a bloke or a person or a male or female whatever you're somebody that wants to go out and be a self-employed gardener your way forward is to do it in your spare time you know work your weekends work your evenings work your days off treat it like a business from day one keep a record of what comes in what goes out what you spend on your business not an accountant but my accountant said to me anything that you need to run that business and you wouldn't have to spend out of the ordinary to run that business is a taxable expense now there's a great big list on the hmrc the hmrc gives you instructions i can't read it i can read but that terminology doesn't go into my brain so for me i pay somebody to do my submission uh, i do the rest of it i do the monthly bookkeeping a day to day but the actual submission where the bloke's tapping it in on a computer and he hits go i pay for that completely up to me so treat your business like a business from day one don't get you don't fall on the, oh it's a little bit of money it's a little bit of a pocket money because if you're not keeping an eye on what you're spending you could be spending a lot earning a lot but you could be spending more than you're earning and then when you do start you've got that full sense of confidence if it is that you're just starting out and you're not in a job or you've left school or left college you know you you know your missus is able to support you and you're able to throw all your time into it treat it like a business don't treat it as yeah i've heard this bit of money look at that money and think right i've, I've gone out first day i've earned 100 pound well hate to break it to you mate that 100 quid isn't yours uh you've got i always ask i always put away 25 percent of every job now i know it's only about 20 uh, but i always put 25 percent of every job and that starts sounding scary that does and this is again customers you know they're paying you 20 pounds to mow a lawn well five of that is tax man's is going to another place so you're only getting 15 quid for that lawn when you think about it so always always remember the tax man never forget it even when you're first starting out now odds on when you're first starting out your bank it you aren't earning much you probably won't have to pay tax or not much but don't bank on it don't bank on it always put the extra away because if you do these little things if you've got okay even when you're first starting out you know that 25 percent could be you know not putting food if you know if it's that hard and you need to put food on the table with that then you've got to think about that but if it is that you know you can put it away do it from the very get-go because it, you know i can't think where to put it but you get used to these hardships now when it's not as hard you, you know you learn to enjoy it more and you can survive better i think when you've had these hardships so budget for it put it away whatever you do now this is my advice here get a separate bank account for your business don't just you know so i think cash for me every year cash payments go down i actually encourage people to pay by backs but what I've noticed as well is more people are paying buybacks. More old people. People will be like, well, that old person's paid. But yeah, more old people now, and that's my customer base, OAPs, more and more of them are turning to online banking because it's easier. They don't have to go out. They don't have to carry cash. You know, the pensioners, you don't have to have pots of money with them anymore. They can do it all online. So get a separate bank account because you don't want to be paying it into sorry not a separate bank account go with a separate bank and what i mean by that is so say say if you're with lloyd's that's your personal bank you want to keep that as separate from your business as possible so go to barclays and open a bank account with them now should it be a business one 
probably now you know it's up to you but i i've never had a business account when i first started my business they didn't have any because it was during covid they, they weren't opening any so i just opened a personal one have i been in trouble with them no uh if it is that any problems arise i'll say well Luke, yeah put me on a business one for whatever benefit is if not and it's not a problem you know moan if you want to make it a problem then well we'll move banks so i hope not because i've had all my cards printed now <laughs> but anyway so get a separate bank account with a separate bank why because you want that separate from yours if you're paying of all the money that you're getting you're paying into that barclays account and all of the money that the customers pay you going into that anything you generate from the business so cash pay it straight into that barclays account now banks now if you pay it into the bank i think you're all right but there's no banks where i live anymore i think the nearest one's about 25 minute run i'm not bothering doing that so i paid in via the post office but they put a cap on it where it's only ten thousand pounds a year you can pay it in now if you're paying in 10 grand cash a year and you're just starting out you're going well but it'll only affect you later on so this is why i'm trying to push customers more and more of them to pay me by backs because it's easier and as well i'm not carrying cash i'm not having to work you know remember to pay it in it's all paid in and it's all into my account there and then so i have a separate bank account so what comes in also what goes out so i've got a separate card for mine so if i go into a petrol station pay by card i've got it set up on apple pay pay with apple pay and that money comes out of my business or sgm account straightforward nice and straightforward if i buy online straightforward and what that's forming is if you hate bookkeeping well that's sort of doing your bookkeeping for you the bank is for free so if i wanted my books you know my ingoings and outgoings for may i can just print off may's bank statement and it'll all be there <laughs> what i've spent on the business and what i've earned from the business straightforward keep your receipts staple your receipts to that jobs are good and nice and straightforward as i said i'm not an accountant there might be better ways there might be worse ways but treat your business like a business from the start also budgeting now you might not want to hear this especially when you're first starting now i tried to do it and as i said when you're first starting it's going to be hard but when i set my bank account up my business one i opened within within that one four other accounts i know it's strange you want your money that comes in so that's like the main landing point for your money and then what i did off with that is i had the tax pot and what i've done since then is i've had another bank account with another bank and i send the money over to that and it's in like a bit of a high interest well a higher interest so while the money's waiting for the tax man it's doing a little bit more for me this you know being savvy with bank accounts is another conversation but in with that four accounts i had the main landing port so where all the money come in it would land in there and it'd stay in there and then what i did at the end of the month or depending on how much went in i'd divvy it out so i'd have a wage for me which i'd send over at the end of every month when you first start out you're living hand to mouth you know you might get 100 pound and then you might need to pay that 100 you know you might need 60 of that for food or whatever and then what i've done to further to that is i had a separate you know, in the account i had one for vehicle so put money in as i said when you first start out it's easier said than done but it won't be hard all the time so when you're starting getting but even if you're putting a little bit in five or a week or whatever it does add up so i've done it now where i've got money in a separate account so if there's a problem then you know the van it's there if there's you know excess money in there say you know it's starting to form a deposit for a van say if something happens this say if something big happens mechanically it's there also tools i set up aside for tools if there's a problem you know if i need any kit i always try to invest in my kit as much as i can so i put money in there for if i have to invest and then the next one is emergency emergency slash winter so don't ever underestimate this depending on your situation you know you need to have a backup and this is what i said at the start 
there's no saving grace i'm sorry uh, so for me i when i went off sick i claimed esa the first time uh and it's about 70 pound a week back then you can live off 70 quid a week um, and then when I first, you know, when I went out, I went to claim it and they couldn't give it to me for some bullshit reason. Uh, I can't remember. Well, I can, but it's too complicated to explain. And in the end, it, it wasn't worth claiming. So I've had to live off my savings while I've been. I'm not moaning about that, but I'm telling you that. So that's the reality of it is that there's no help. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, you could probably go down the universal credit route. There might be something if you're proper on your arse but it won't be much the best thing that can help you and this is the thing with self-employed and this is probably why you know when you see some self-employed tradesmen it's a bit selfish it's because you do need to be you you're the only one that can look after yourself if you've got the money in your account saved then that's going to help you if there's an emergency nobody else unfortunately so treat your business like a business from the get-go now before I go, I'll talk about business decisions. So when you're self-employed and when you work for yourself, I suppose like in any job, but of all the jobs I've ever done, this is the one that's I've has garnered the most the most people giving me advice. Now advice is basically I've received some very, very good advice over the years, like somebody telling me to treat it like business. And I've received some very, very bad advice. Now, the very, very bad advice often comes from the people that you love the most and that should want the best for you. And they do. It's just that sometimes people will want to tell you what they think you want to hear, and that's not helpful. Uh, and sometimes people might not have enough experience in their life and tell you what they think is the best. But in reality, you know, it's not. It's not at all. You imagine somebody who's been working for a company for 50 years, you know, doing the same job, never had to deal with people, never had to put themselves in a difficult position, and then suddenly you're in one. Their reaction or what they'll say is going to be a lot different to somebody who's probably done five years working self-employed or on their own. So listen to who it gives you advice and pick your advice. Don't just go with one thing if you're unsure, but listen to it and just pick from you know different sources of advice uh, and at the same time as I said always remember there'll be an element of people I don't mean this to be putting you off or horrible there's an element to people that they will tell you they'll give you wrong advice basically even if they're friends or family and you, you shouldn't have people like that as friends but you don't know until you don't know but I've experienced it where they'll tell you something that's completely wrong and it's to keep you down it's because they never did it or you know and i i hold my hats off to anybody um, that goes self-employed or starts a business because you know you're completely going out there on your own um, some people understand that some people don't some people are jealous that you were going to do it or you're going to attempt to do it so what they'll do is, is they won't sabotage you directly but it's like killing with kindness and best way i heard it is research it's positive trolling where they'll you know they'll push you down a situation you know if you have a problem with a customer and you know it's going to escalate they might try and get you to escalate it on their part just so they can see the reaction yeah yeah tell them to shove it yeah uh, tell them that you want all the money now tell them that you need you know all that sort of stuff and it's positive trolling it's and that's probably worse than negative trolling if i'm being honest with you so like i said you've really really got a sort of when you go self-employed, it's not that your friendships decrease, they don't. But you've got to be careful because if you're having a bad day, people can take advantage or say something. And if you're having a good year, people could sort of, you know, make friends with you. Um, but that's in the extreme of cases. Overall, though, just to end this conversation, um, I really enjoy self-employed life, if I'm being honest with you. It's not so much because everyone's like, oh yeah, you're self-employed, you've got the freedom, uh, you know, you've got the way to just, you know, if you want a month off, you know, a month off. If you want a week off, you know, a week off. If you want a day off. And I, I certainly do appreciate that. It's very rare that I'll go, right, I'm going to have a week off, you know, sod it. Uh, but I could do it if I wanted. 
and I could do that with a boss if I wanted but all the places I've worked there's been a boss's schedule and a my schedule and they've never ended up meshing and depending on what type of work you do you know if you work a job where you need to be there on the weekends well I can have any weekend I want off now I can have any day off I want off now if I wanted to even during the peak of summer when I'm rammed I could ring that day's customers and just say hey uh, something's come up today I'm going to be with you tomorrow I'm going to be with you the day before whatever uh, there's not many jobs like that that you can do um, there is a lot of pro points to self-employed there's a lot of negatives but I think the biggest pro point that will avoid the negatives is you as a person your determination your grit when you go self-employed it's so for me I don't believe in fate I don't believe in luck per se the thing is you can buy luck and you can affect luck you know if you wanted to win the lottery buy enough tickets it's as simple as that you know okay you'd end up buying millions and millions but you'd win it uh, you know but everyone sees lottery as luck when you see other gardeners out there that have scored these big contracts and they've got a v, you know they've got a fucking workshop you know a, a barn full of equipment it's not luck that they've got there they haven't just suddenly you know gone out and it's all been there and it's all in their name and you know they've grafted for it and it is hard work there's no such thing as an easy life there's easier lives there's definitely I do believe in being in the right place at the right time bloody hell you know it, it does happen but as for blind luck you can't rely on it at all so I hope this doesn't put you off in a way I'm hoping it sort of shows you the realities and also inspires you but as I said if you're just starting out it's going to be hard but I'll be honest with you as hard as I thought it was it wasn't that hard it was it got easier quickly and you've just got to manage it you've just got to expect it and if like me you've coming from a shit job where you were entitled to holidays but you couldn't get them because it didn't match up with the boss's schedule you're on a crap wage you know you were overworked you were working all the time I used to hate it on my days off when I did get them or if I booked them off you know the phone would be ringing for trivial reasons completely trivial reasons uh, but now I find when the phone rings for me it's for positive it's for oh could you come and do a lawn cut could you come and give me a quote it's not a could you come and you know there's a, a bird inside somebody's lodge and they're scared of getting some bird aids or whatever bollocks excuse to come up with so have a good day guys and i hope this video helps to now